Hello, everyone. Good evening. A very warm welcome to post Brexit future, a new chapter and new business opportunities for the UK and Ukraine. Uh, my name is Andrew Robel, and I am the founding partner at Emerging Europe. Emerging Europe is a uh, new community and intelligence platform which is focused in 23 countries of Europe. I am also the lead of Tech Emerging Europe advocates. Uh, so in October last year, the United Kingdom and Ukraine signed a comprehensive political trade, fr uh, free trade and strategic partnership agreement. Among other things, the deal expected to secure continued preferential trade for businesses in both markets. The UK is already one of Ukraine's biggest trading partners. And today we're going to explore all trade opportunities especially in the tech sector between Ukraine and the United Kingdom. So without further ado, I would like to start by inviting Taras Krukin, who is the Minister Counselor for Economic Affairs at the Embassy uh, of Ukraine to the United Kingdom, to start with a few opening remarks to give us more information about the trade deal that the UK and Ukraine signed uh, a few months ago. Taras, the floor is yours. Thank, thank you, Andrew. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Andrew, for, for introduction. And uh, I would like to thank, to thank, can you hear me? Because I, yes. I hear some, I, I would like to thank Sigma Software for organizing today's event and, and uh, personally, uh, Alexandra Gavaruha for putting her efforts to do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm really delighted to speak today uh, alongside with uh, Kerry Hallard, the Chief Executive for Global Outsourcing Association and other disting distinguished speakers. Mm. So we are here today to talk about the opportunities uh, of post-Brexit future and more specifically to my topic about the, opportunity, the opportunities the UK-Ukraine Strategic Partnership Agreement brings uh, and especially for tech entrepreneurs. Uh, I've been asked to prepare a short presentation about the history of our agreement. What does it give to us? How do you read this agreement? And what are the opportunities you have? So uh, my presentation is about for 10 minutes and uh, I would like to, to ask yeah, Kiev to, to switch the slides. I don't have the access. All right, so first of all, I would like to, to make a short recap where we are right now in terms of Brexit and this new, new chapter and new era. So as you all very well aware, at the beginning of last year, in January, the UK has left the EU, but the transition period has ended just recently uh, on, Chris, on New Year Eve on 31st of December, 2020. So from 1st January, 2021, the UK has entered this new post-Brexit era of trade when it realizes its independent trade policy and builds new trade partnerships with its, with its partners. We can go next. Uh, what does it mean in terms of all these agreements and, and trade deals? So from 1st January 2021, EU trade agreements no longer apply to the UK. Uh, as a part, as a member of EU, United Kingdom uh, used more than 40 trade agreements covering more than 70 countries. Uh, including Ukraine-EU Association Agreement. So, uh, someone might ask, what, what happens if we don't have this agreement? What does it give? Uh, what does it mean to us? Well, first of all, it brings a lot of, a lot of problems and troubles. Can we go back? A lot of problems and troubles for existing partnerships and supply chains. Uh, it brings new tariffs, it brings extra paperwork, it immediately goes to, to, to means the rise of prices, and so on. So the main task for UK was to, we can go to the next slide, the, max, the main task of UK was to secure somehow the continuity in trade. Uh, this process was called also as rollover of trade agreements, where the UK tried to replicate agreements it had as a EU member, and uh, by, by striking new agreements and replicating the previous one. In some cases, uh, this was not only technical work, the bespoke solutions were applied 
like in Ukraine. Uh, so the news, these new agreements, can we, can they bring us? Uh, they, they secure the preferential uh, access uh, and preferential treatment. So for this moment, the UK has already secured and agreed more than 60 agreements with more than 60 countries. Some of these agreements were already full, fully ratified, some provisionally applied, but uh, in terms of Ukraine, our agreement is, is, is in force right now. We can go next. Um, so we started this preparation immediately after the, the referendum on in 2017, the consultation started. We had more than 35 rounds of consultations, and eventually, last October, the agreement was signed. And from January 1st, it's it's in force. Can go next. Uh, when when you when you hear about the agreement, uh, you can see some very nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can we can go. We, you can see. Uh, as to, can we can we go? More, you can see how how the politicians and involved people call it historic landmark new chapter new era. What does it mean for us? Well, first of all, it strengthens the political and trade ties we have. It brings our relations to a new level, which we call strategic partnership level. It secures our trade, but what important is a start a starting point even for further liberalization. So in a nutshell, for Ukraine, this agreement is the largest bilateral treaty agreement we have right now with one country. Uh, it covers goods and services because not all the free trade agreements cover services and, and other areas as well. Immediately from this year, 98% of our goods will receive the free access to UK market. And in 2023, 100% of our goods will be free full access we will have only 36 products covered by tariff rate quotas uh, we can go next uh, i don't want to, to stop a lot uh, explaining the, the the chapters in the agreement the what we have in, in agreement but in, very very shortly uh, what you can find in the text so in preamble you will find most important facts about ukraine and uk like uh, for us important points about the recognition of Russia's actions, commitments to enhance cooperation and so on. In, in Title I, we can find the general principles important for both countries, such as human rights, uh, uh, fundamental freedoms, principles of free market and so on. Title II is about, is about political dialogue and cooperation and feel in, in foreign and security policy. Title three is about uh, justice, justice, freedom, security. It's about the mobility of workers, movement of people, the, the, the start of, of visa-free regime and so on. Title four is probably the core of the text. It's, it's, uh, it regulates trade, both goods and services. Uh, title five is about economic cooperation in different spheres. We have 20 chapters and, and uh, we regulate the spheres. Title six is about uh, the financial assistance maybe provided by UK government to achieve this agreement. And title seven is about the institutions and voyages we have to, to oversee and implement the agreement. Okay, now uh, probably the, 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 the more important part to, for today's webinar is what about the IT, how do we implement it, how do we use the agreements when we talk about the IT services and, and, tech, and tech technologies. We can go to the next slide and miss this one, next one. Uh, so let's first of all uh discuss what are we talking about are we talking about the services or data of course it's services it was decided by w2o like 10 years ago that uh, when you talk about it and and, and trade and trade we talk about trade in service sometimes of course it's goods can we can go back uh it, it's goods when when we talk about the product or, or hardware but mostly in terms of today's webinar, we will talk about the services. Uh, in the agreement, you will find the 
words uh, as computer services or computer and related services. Uh, they, uh, they cover all, all the services that our exporters and UK exporters can provide and uh, this is defined by United Nations classification. You can find it on Google, it's, it's easy to find. So, uh, next slide. What did UK and Ukraine agree on this trade in services and trade in services in IT sector? So we agreed to liberalize establishment and trade. This is very important, two, two words, establishment and trade, because when we talk about the liberalization in services, we talk about two main categories of these commitments, or we call liberalization, we call them commitments. It's about market access, how our suppliers enter the UK market and vice versa. Uh, when we talk about market access, we talk about that no restrictions may be applied if, if one country has already liberalized its market. Uh, and the second uh, category of commitments is national treatment of suppliers. So once the supplier has entered the market, the other party cannot uh, restricted or cannot, uh, you know, they cannot uh, discriminate this supply against its own suppliers. So that's very important for us that these two categories are in the agreement. We can go next. Uh, if you will open the agreement or try to work with the texts, or we call them schedules, you will find some very difficult, like, uh, and, and for, for people who are not lawyers or, or who are not used to work with such types of documents, some different, like, uh, uh, you know, scribblings, like you will see computer mode one, two, none, bound, unbound, very difficult to comprehend, probably. So just a couple of words, how do we treat these this provisions? Next slide. When we talk about trade in services like uh, IT outsource or, or software or something uh, or any other services, any, any, any type of services, we, there are four main types of their supply used by WTO, by all free trade agreements, including this agreement as well. So mode number one is cross-border supply. When you supply services to the customers on another ter territory, it's like telephone calls or, or architecture or, or whatever. The second mode is when you consume this service abroad. It's for example, when you are a tourist or you receive some healthcare in another country, this is a mode number two. Mode number three is a commercial presence. It's when you establish a branch or subsidiary in another country and provide services using this branch. And mode number four is when you send your employee to go to another country and provide the service there, like doctor, teacher, or IT specialists sometimes. Okay, probably the most important slide here. What does this agreement mean in types of every type of this mode? Because when we talk about uh, services, we need to take into account all these different types of, of, of modes we supply them. So, uh, as you can see, all four modes have been liberalized. That means that you, both UK and Ukraine treat establishment and supply of these services the same way they treat their own suppliers. We do have some reservations on mode number four because the special economic needs tests must be done when we export this kind of services from Ukraine to UK. Um, I would also like to draw attention of people who are working in this area and supply and services to, to, to both markets on, on other important provisions we have in agreement. Uh, we have a, sp a separate article on computer services. We have a, a, a separate chapter on a, um, a intellectual property protection, which is very important when you work in, in, in software. We also have a special chapter on dispute settlement when you can be sure of, of, of any possible uh, disputes you might have. And probably the last two slides I have is, uh, you can, well, uh, for those who want to, to, to read themselves or to, to understand better the, what, what the agreement is about, you can find the text already uh, on, on official websites in Ukraine and, and the UK. 
Uh, I would also like to, to, to draw your attention that we have a special hotline on, on the UK-Ukraine free trade area established by Ministry of Economy of Ukraine. You, you can find the, the email and phone here. And next slide. You, can al you always know that you can also go to, to the embassy. We, can, we are always happy to help you. Uh, we have a special mechanism within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Council of Exporters and Investors. And you can also go to, to our partners from British Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce or Export Promotion Office. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's what I wanted to tell you. And I would be happy to provide extra information for those who need them and share the presentation with, with you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Taras. Um, you've given us a, a brief overview of uh, what's you know, what's waiting for us in the UK and also in Ukraine. Uh, I would like to uh, remind everyone and note that this webinar and the uh, virtual uh, trade mission is organized by the Export Promotion Office of Ukraine, Sigma Software, and uh, the Embassy of, 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 the, of Ukraine to the UK, and it's supported by uh, USAID. So now what I would like to have a look at is actually the situation in the UK. So we have a fantastic uh, guest today. Uh, this is Harry Hallard, the CEO of the Global Sourcing Association and also the chairwoman of the Global Technology and Business Services Council. Uh, Kerry, welcome. Good evening. Thanks for having me. I must say, I'm very, very jealous of seeing that picture of people in the same room. So um, we've not been in the same room with working colleagues for, oh gosh, must be, must be nearly a year now. So I'm, I'm very envious to see you sitting there together. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, so Kerry, uh, let's, let's have a look at the situation in the UK right now. So we left the European Union, well, less than a month ago. Uh, where do you see the tech industry in the UK, the IT, what, what do sort of tech companies or IT services buyers tell you uh, when, they, when they speak to you? Where are we now? Okay, so um, let's take a step back and look at what actually happened when the pandemic hit. So obviously a massive shock for everybody. Um, it was a, a huge um, mobilization to have um, people working from home and I think if we look at the response of both the global technology and business services industry it was absolutely phenomenal how well all those organizations worked to have their people working from home they didn't just keep the lights on for their customers in the UK and um, all around the world they actually kept the wheels turning so I think our industry, both global technology and business services, uh, responded incredibly well. Um, trust and partnerships increased during the pandemic and continues to increase. The way that organisations partnered and collaborated with their, you know, their, their partners around the world was absolutely, um, absolutely phenomenal. And as a result of that, the industry grown. So despite the pandemic, um, we saw, um, according to research that we, we've done, um, we, we did collaboratively with Everest Research, we saw a 1% growth in the industry over 2020. And we are predicting that the industry will grow between 3 and 5% in 2021. So a hugely positive story for the industry and huge prospects for the industry as businesses, UK businesses, what they're saying to me is, you know, these projects that they've had and they've been thinking about for three to five years, they suddenly had to make them happen and get them over the line. And because these digital transformation, these automation, these um, working from home, all of these things I've been thinking about happened overnight and happened successfully they now have a huge appetite to drive more and more technology developments. So we're calling it um, a period of tech acceleration, and we believe the tech acceleration um, will continue at rapid speed. So a very, very positive response from the industry and hugely positive prospects for the industry as well. And do you think that Brexit will have an impact on, you know, on the industry as well? Anyway, in any way? 
Right, obviously um, Brexit wasn't good news for our industry. We did a poll across our membership base the day before the referendum and 80% of our community wanted to remain. Um, there remains disappointment, obviously, that Brexit did happen. Um, there was a slogan, which you might all be familiar with from Boris Johnson, was, let's get Brexit done. The truth of the matter is that Brexit is not done. It's not close to being done. We have, I think it's either 25 or 28 working parties that are looking at negotiating key aspects of what Brexit is going to look like. So if we look at what the Brexit negotiations with the EU um, have focused on, it's been predominantly on goods. And the services sector has remained largely untouched. And given the size of the services um, industry, it's, it's almost farcical that they've done very, very little with it. Do you see uh, opportunities or challenges in that context for you know uh, the development of the sector, but also for a potential collaboration or cooperation with uh, service providers from uh, other countries? Right, so the number one issue that we've got, we had it beforehand and Brexit has absolutely accelerated that issue, is we don't have enough talent in the UK. So um, we will be looking at um, accessing the global talent pool to enable us to drive these digital transformations. Now, one of the things that um, we did when the pandemic hit and when we wanted to celebrate the success of our industry, um, we realized it was an opportunity to reposition the industry, to celebrate the industry, but also to paint a really positive future for the future of global technology and business services um, industry. So we reached out to a whole host of different industry associations around the world and said, look, I think this is an opportunity for us to not just look at our national approaches, but to actually look at the, the global response. Because there's a very real risk that because so many people all around the world, but certainly I know the situation in the UK, so many people have been furloughed. Unemployment has, has already, despite furlough, has already reached an all time high. There's a huge um, desire, I guess, or feeling that we should become very protectionist and nationalistic in our employment um, approaches. But the reality of that situation is we don't have anywhere near enough skilled workers to do the work that we need to do in the digital transformation place. So part of the work that we've been doing in reaching out to those other industry associations, and um, we created something called the Global Technology and Business Services Council, which is an alliance of 12 of the industry associations around the world. It was really focused on the ongoing importance of the global um, talent piece and how countries should not become nationalistic and cannot afford to become nationalistic in their approach. So I'm an absolute firm believer that the UK is going to continue um, at an accelerated level need to access the global talent pool for technology. I think the figures are something like we, we've got a 65% requirement to upskill British workers um, to, to, to fill the requirements that we've got at the moment. When when you answer the, my first question, you you said that there is an increase in trust, and I found it really interesting uh, because it's it means that you know maybe British uh, tech companies and British IT services buyers are now you know more trustful uh, towards you know uh, service providers from uh, other markets. Uh, is do you see that as an opportunity for? you know, service providers uh, from countries like Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. I think the UK has historically always been a very um, avid user of offshore delivery destinations and has always partnered with different um, different countries around the world. That is going to continue unabated. I'm, I'm, I'm certain, uh, very certain of that. And Ukraine has got a huge opportunity. You know, it is a very um, it's a, a very talent-rich um, destination. It's a cost-effective um, destination, um, and um, it's near shore. 
And that is one of the things that I think, you know, we'll see is changing with um, major UK buyers is they're looking for building resilience and they're looking for building a much more blended um, global delivery footprint. So it's not everything being off far shore, it's actually having a good blend of um, far shore and near shore. Um, so yeah, Ukraine has um, every potential, and obviously with the agreement signed, you know, every every potential to increase its trading relationship with the UK for technology and business services. Um, at the moment, I think I've been at the figures is pretty small. Uh, I think it's about 62 million is exported to um, to Ukraine for business services, not just IT for business services. But we're exporting closer to 25 billion to India. So as that rebalances and changes, you can see um, just how big the opportunity is. Um, but my word of warning, and I've said this on a stage to, um, to Ukraine uh, a number of times before, is you want to really, really build your brand profile for the technology work that you actually do. So I know there's some really, really great companies, and I've seen a load of Ukrainian companies win at GSA awards, but I still don't think Ukraine makes enough noise about its potential um, to deliver technology services to UK companies. Perfect. Thank you very much for this part. I'm going to uh, invite the rest of the panel right now. So we have a, a, a wonderful group of uh, companies, of Ukrainian companies, uh, uh, starting from software, uh, you know, uh, developers to uh, uh, law firms. So uh, around us, we have actually four people in the studio in uh, Kiev and. Uh, the rest of us are joining from uh, from different places, uh, well, across Europe, uh, as it uh, as it seems. Um, so let me just introduce the rest of the panel. So I'll start with Dan Melnikov, uh, the one of the founders and COO of CoreFi. Uh, if you could raise your hand, so everyone knows. All right, there there he is. We have Alexander Nikitin, the CEO of at Tebin. There he is. Maria Stakun, Senior Associate, Head of Business Development at Aviter Group. She's in the studio as well. And so is Alexandra uh, Govorupa, International PR Lead at Sigma Software. And uh, joining me online, Alex Lishun, Director, Client Engagement at Altex Soft. Pete Smith, VP for, of Sales for Europe at Innovex. And finally, the last but not least, Arthur Kornienko, the founder and the CEO of Minova Web R. So I am going to start with Maria. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, you know, about both the uh, what Gary was saying about the opportunities in the, in, in the UK market, but also about the trade agreement that Aras was describing um, to us earlier. Where do you see uh, opportunities for the IT sector in Ukraine, for the tech sector in Ukraine? Um, hi. Uh, um, Where do you see opportunity? Sorry, let me just read uh, re the question. Concerning the trade agreement, you know, which is a legal yes. matter, actually, and also the opportunity that Harry was talking about. Where do you see opportunities for uh, the tech sector in Ukraine or service providers out of Ukraine? Yes, um, thank you for this question. Uh, I think that uh, it is a huge opportunity for us to show the uh, this uh, increasing level of uh, Ukrainian services, and uh, especially in tech industry, because. Uh, Ukrainian people, we were always very creative and it is the perfect moment for this um, cooperation of uh, UK stability and Ukrainian um, creativity. Uh, from our perspective, for example, uh, we are working day by day with the uh, Ukrainian IT business and uh, we see this uh, increasing level of uh, all of the uh, 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 skill set, yes, that we have, and um, for our from from the view of our company, it will be the um, 
very special moment to uh, show the uh, the level of uh, not only the development uh, services in Ukraine, but also the uh, legal services which we are providing. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. We have three uh, large software uh, companies uh, here. We have uh, Alexandra, we have uh, Pete, and we also have uh, Alec. Uh, I would like to hear from you where you see the opportunities for your companies. Alexandra, can we start with you? Okay, let's start. Uh, so, um, Ukraine is really, as Maria said, uh, is uh, full of creative people and um, we have uh, around 200,000 developers, top-notch developers right now. And uh, I see uh, the good opportunity of connection with uh, the UK market, uh, considering Brexit and considering uh, new ways of cooperation. Uh, and um, also, it's important that uh, we have a lot of startups and startup initiatives in our country. And um, uh, IT series companies work with startups and help them grow. Uh, for example, Sigma Software uh, has uh, around 20 uh, partner products in our portfolio. And we help uh, our clients uh, by integrating ready products, uh, not by building them from the scratch and uh, reducing their cost this way. Also, we share our vast business network uh, with our customers and help them to find investors, uh, help them to find uh, clients, and so on and so forth. Um, it's uh, important to say that, um, uh, that for some people in, in the UK, uh, probably they have uh, uh, their own perception of Ukraine as a post-Soviet country with uh, um, not very good reputation uh, regarding uh, corruption or war. Uh, but these things are changing and um, uh, we work hard uh, uh, on building uh, a new Ukraine uh, and with the help of tech people especially, because tech sphere is uh, number two in Ukraine by um, expert services right now. And um, uh, I have to say that, uh, first of all, uh, uh, young people in tech sphere are ready to work with uh, Europe, with UK people. We have different mindset and we have uh, a strong um, connections uh, with uh, European people. And um, uh, it would be great to build uh, new bridges with uh, the UK uh, companies, with startups, with enterprises. So I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. You actually touched on one thing that I was going to ask later, which is the you know the the, the issue of, of of that image of Ukraine. But we're going to we're going to come back to to that in a, in a moment. I wanted to ask Alex as well. What's his take on on that? Sure, Alex from uh, um, Alex Alsoft. Yep. Thanks, Edra. And uh, thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. Uh, a lot of great people join this uh, this event so um i really love the uh, the headline of Jerry's slides one of his slides where it said the new era i believe that's uh, that's a good term to use because uh, you know the the great talent pool that ukraine has can definitely bridge the gap uh, between you know the need of uh, of the uk companies in uh, in skilled workers as well as the um, competitive price uh, comparing to the local market in Ukraine. But on top of that, we can also compete on quality with, uh, with some of the offshoring destinations like Asia or Latin America. And we definitely have, uh, you know, almost the same time zone, uh, which is really, uh, which is, creates a great, uh, you know, communication overlap. So, for example, we provide data engineering and data consulting services. And uh, like just two or three years ago, the 
UK companies were hesitant to share their data outside the UK, especially outside the EU. Uh, and it was, you know, nearly impossible after the GDPR was introduced. And um, so th this agreement will will definitely help uh, to to build this awareness and trust between between businesses in the UK and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, thank you very much for 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 these uh, uh, thoughts. And I'll I'll ask Pete uh, to contribute to to that as well. Uh, Pete. What's your thoughts on, on that? Hi, Hi. Yeah, uh, good evening. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us to the presentation today. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I would echo some of the comments that we've already heard today, but um, one of the things that we've, we've looked at uh, Innovex, Innovex is a fairly well established company. We, we have established processes, uh, we're delivering solutions globally, and uh, we're dealing with all sorts of uh, high end customers. Um, one of the things we've seen is we've seen a niche within, certainly within the UK, where there is a gap, as, as uh, Kerry mentioned earlier, there's a gap at the moment, and that's what we're actually looking to fulfill. One of the that came out in a couple of recent surveys is that top CEOs are really wanting to see a text on, and that's really what to do to come in and, and offer a, a service which is really to none. And I think that's where we have the advantage uh, is we're closer to home. Ukraine is, is, is far closer to home of the Far Eastern companies. Uh, people in UK feel far more comfortable dealing with the Ukrainian company uh, than perhaps they would somewhere that's in, in a totally different time zone, as you mentioned before. So we've the company started talking to a number of uh, company and already got great response and uh, receiving you know really good response from people and and just one other point I wanted to mention is that it doesn't always come down to price uh, we're not going in and suggesting that we're going to be the cheapest or under anybody or anything it's really based on quality of service and professionalism and I think the level of professionalism that you get from Ukrainian companies and certainly from Innovex is far far higher than than other other companies and, and again uh, something that Kerry mentioned at the very beginning perhaps that there are some companies in the UK that have, that have dropped the ball and they're just not really taking care of their customers in the way that, that, that we do and we're very keen to do an excellent job which is what we do so I think there are huge opportunities out there and we're really looking forward to growing up in the UK. Perfect thank you thank you very much Pete. Uh, Arthur uh, I'll ask you now uh, Present a company uh, that uh, is focused on web development and uh, uh, sort of offers creative services. How do you see uh, you know the situation from your perspective? Arthur, can you hear us? Okay, I don't think we we can hear you. All right, so I'll I'll come back to you in a second, and I'll speak to uh, um, the fintech company and also the uh, engineering company first, because uh, they are sort of on the on the border of those IT related. Are you with us now? No, I can't hear you. Okay, all right. So let's let's look at um, uh, let's speak to Dan uh, briefly. Dan, how what what what's 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 the situation like for you? Well, first of all, thank you for reminding me. Good evening. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, yeah. We you are absolutely right. We're in age. We are at the same time a technology company and. This, uh, providing uh, ways to pay in different countries around the world. Uh, I think if there are a lot of opportunities and this trade agreement as a framework is uh, bi-directional. It's not only for, uh, uh, just inviting talent to use the talent inside the country and supply uh, IT services to help UK companies to scale or to go to other markets, success of the markets. It's also about the uh, another way opportunity is that UK businesses uh, can reach the markets here and Ukraine could be a, a gateway or 
to the trusted partner to 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 uh, this part of the world, and it's there is a market, and uh, okay, maybe it's not that big as the, the neighboring countries' markets uh, to Ukraine, for example, like Poland to Russia or you know, uh, uh, Turkey, um, but it's, it's still a market, and it's gro it is, the potential in the market is growing. And uh, as a fintech, what we enable is to uh, enable payments by, by providing connectivity to all, almost you know, 90, 95% of uh, Ukrainian uh, acquirers and payment providers, so simply with one integration. And vice versa, so we, our strategy is, uh, is also bi-directional, is that we can help UK businesses to um, access consumers here, or customers, and the same way we're helping Ukrainian and neighboring countries' businesses to access foreign markets, including UK, uh, which is, uh, I would say, the, the, the world's uh, fintech capital, or, you know, and it's important to be there. And our company has, uh, uh, as well, a company in UK, and to, we're already working in, 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 UK, in the UK market. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alexander uh, and uh, Alexander is the CEO of a of an engineering company and a construction company. So how how do you see that from your perspective? Thank you, Andrew. I see a really big opportunity for us as engineers, and also in a combination with tech companies, because if we are talking about industrial strategy of UK and digital build Britain, we, uh, in, in the UK, you have a, quite a big challenges to digitalize construction and building sectors. And if we are talking about digital twins and, uh, uh, and digital construction, it's very difficult to uh, say, is it still engineering or is it IT? It's, uh, it's becoming more and more IT and if we are combining this effort like we are already doing with Sigma software in the in the other markets like Sweden um, then we can contribute to the industrial strategy of the UK with, with our talents because it's quite a challenging uh, challenging task and you need a lot of digital driven people in, uh, in order to make this transformation happens and also in respect to um, to be directional uh, Benefits. We also looking for the uh, for the investors from UK and developers who will invest in in, in Ukraine, and we can support uh, by by the professional engineers in Ukraine. So this is definitely a win win approach for us in future. Okay. okay. So, so I'll, I'll have a question. Uh, it, 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 it's it's Carrie mentioned that, that uh, she said at some point that that uh, you know. Ukraine is not visible enough in the United Kingdom. I would also like to hear Alexandra's work. She mentioned you know, this image. So why do you think now? Is it like better? Is it are you know there are more opportunities now compared to uh, to you know to before? And uh, what kind of obstacles? Uh, were out there before that are gone now from your perspective. Anyone? Not everyone at once, please. <laughs> Why now? Alexandra, you right. let, so, me, let uh, me try. Oh. No, no, just just somebody, question, somebody uh, trying to. Oh, Pete. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, 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 it's an interesting question because it's, I, I was asked uh, something very, very similar the other day on what obstacles there are. And really, the, there, are, there are no obstacles now. With, with Brexit being finished, the, there is no problem and the, the, there's no obstacles. We've been in business in, in the UK for some time. I'm based in the UK. And really, the, the obstacles there were before. The, the, only, the only obstacles... Uh, really that could happen is, is perhaps just the odd time zone difference of a, of a couple of hours but in terms of what obstacles could be you know maybe the, there's with travel that's possibly one thing and the COVID driven and that's going to be temporary but we don't really see any problems to that bring us so be done remotely uh, i'm based here so if people need to be 
right, uh, we can very quickly buy in and, and, and actually go and see. So, um, from, from our perspective, we see very, very few obstacles. In fact, um, since Brexit's finished, I would say there are far, far, far less. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and how about this uh, this image issue? I remember uh, I, I I spoke to a uh, to the CEO of uh, HSBC uh, in Poland actually, and you know Poland is a huge market nearby, and uh, this was a few years ago, and he said that you know people in the UK have a, a an idea of Poland from between five and twenty years ago, so you know this uh, we're talking about Poland, which is a, an EU country. And uh, Ukraine, you know, is still not an EU country. And, uh, you know, Alexandra mentioned those, you know, issues like corruption and, and so on, which are changing, of course. Uh, but do you think that uh, people in the UK have to or should somehow be exposed more to what Ukraine can offer and how to do that? Anyone? Oh, Alexandra. I'm okay. that one again, like. <laughs> Yeah, I I think that um, of course it's important to 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 change uh, the situation inside the country, but also important to uh, broadcast our, our changes uh, to another countries and to the UK as well. And um, of course, we have uh, a lot of uh, changes, a lot of interest in, uh, uh, in new initiatives in our country, uh, a new Ministry of Digital Transformation, first of all, uh, Expert Promotion Office, which helps us in this mission as well. And, uh, I think it's also important to support such initiatives as uh, our Ukrainian trade mission to the UK, as, uh, for example, Ukrainian pavilions uh, at different uh, exhibitions and conferences. So uh, we have to be uh, bold and brave to speak about our changes, about our opportunities, what we offer to the world. And uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, you know the phrase is uh, uh, is uh, um, oh, help me rather to be than rather than to see. Uh, I, I forgot this phrase. Yeah. So I think it's important to be and to 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 be seen as a, a country mm -hmm. with a good reputation. So the work inside of country is important, but we have not for, forget about uh, the PR of our country, uh, the, the building new image of it. And um, I personally involved uh, in different initiatives which helps uh, this image. Uh, I was organizing uh, uh, London Tech Week uh, uh, Ukrainian event um, uh, together with the Embassy of Ukraine to the UK and uh, with Expert Promotion Office and Kyiv IT Cluster. Um, I was uh, one of the organizers of uh, Ukrainian Pavilion in Israel and um, at Web Summit and so on and so forth. So it's uh, really important steps um, and uh, we should make it step by step, like baby steps probably. And uh, I hope and I'm sure that uh, that will help to bring us more clients to our country, uh, more partnerships, investments, uh, and uh, new good connections. Okay, perfect, thank you, thank you very much. Anyone would like to add to this reputation building of that, please? Uh, yeah, I, I no, just I re it. you remember it one moment. Um, it was in 2019 before all this uh, uh, corona, uh, uh, corona crisis and uh, the uh, November Web Summit, the largest tech conference on the planet. And uh, we were together, right? And uh, do you remember that moment that uh, from the stage they announced Ukraine? And uh, rise, raise your hands and... Uh, it was like a surprise. Oh, the summit. It, yeah, the just was, yeah, yeah, just yeah, mm -hmm. the first moment, the very beginning, and uh, and we raised our hands, and uh, they uh, they just announced on the stage that it was it is it was that time the largest community came from Ukraine and joined the summit at that time. So it's ex extremely big uh, uh, country in terms of uh, you know population, right, in the territory in Europe, and uh, it's plays significant role in 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 you know in tech 
um, is I under, is I, is, if I'm right, so this is China is number one out of three countries, second in India and Ukraine. Yeah, could you imagine that we have a population uh, more than 40 million people and uh, not, a, not a billion people, right? So that the, um, we have concentration of the talent, right? And we, have, we are able to build a lot of you know, technologies, products, and deliver, f deliver things. And so we're already you know, on the way to, uh, to, com to, uh, to compete with you know, global players in the terms of like, we are a software vendor, we are not, not a company that provides you know, IT services. So we are marketing our product in the UK and other countries and working with different um, uh, different, uh, different people to help them to scale their business in other countries. So it's very exciting when they talk when it, when they're talking to uh, British clients. And uh, yeah, we're in the same time zone almost, and two time two hours difference, almost nothing. So we can support the business, and we can support their business, and they we can support British business here. So it's uh, I think that's a, you know, a good a good chance and. Um, there is no obstacles in tech industries, but because everybody is already understand that it doesn't matter where the vendor is, if it's a good vendor or not. If it's a vendor in the United States, it's a good vendor. It's you can you can work with this vendor. If it's bad vendor and the product is bad and the services of this pro of this vendor is a bit uh, a bad, so that's there is not uh, uh, why you should work with this vendor. Yeah, you have a lot of opportunities. You have a lot of uh, competitors. You know, competitive products uh, and so on. So I think our niche uh, is what. What we can offer is the competitive services, competitive product, and I think this, this, there is no obstacles, at least in IT or you know software. Uh, uh, very, yeah, maybe there is some nuances in culture. Yeah, very absolutely, but not so much. Not so much. I mean, yeah. yeah, and we are ready to cooperate. It's important uh, because these trends is in unity, uh, and. Uh, Talking about the ex experience of our tech people, tech sphere in Ukraine, it started in the 90s. Uh, so as for the moment, we are quite mature, we understand all the processes, uh, we integrate uh, the compliance into our companies, uh, bringing them from uh, European, from the US companies, from our clients. Uh, that is why to work with us is really easy. So we understand business processes and uh, we help businesses to solve their tasks with uh, technology solutions. Mm -hmm. Any other solutions that we have to increase that trust and... Uh, Legal. Um... <laughs> okay. uh, I wanted just to add, you know, that we had all of this okay i'm sorry yeah this is with her lag and echo can you hear me yes thanks yeah okay i just wanted to jump in there because um, this is my recent personal experience with ukraine um so i'm a major fan i think there are no obstacles i think you have lots of opportunities I visited um, Ukraine several times and been really impressed by everybody I've met. Yeah, everybody I've seen. So we did invite Ukraine to join the Global Technology and Business Services Council um, because we wanted to be inclusive with Ukraine. Um, and um, IT Association Ukraine accepted that invitation. But then they've done nothing with it. They've attended none of the events, they've marked none of the meetings. So I've got India, I've got Latin America, I've got the United States, um, I've got Sri, um, Sri Lanka, I've got South Africa, we've got all of these, we've got ABSL representing, um, you know, Poland, we've got IBES representing Bulgaria. We invited IT Association of Ukraine um, to get involved and we've run a couple of brilliant events that look at the future of the industry which I think is really important for Ukraine to join that conversation. Where is this industry going? You know, two weeks ago, we had a fantastic event on impact sourcing, which is all about ethical sourcing in this industry. And the next event we've got is on open talent and the future of gig, which is going to be the biggest game changer. 
and Ukraine has not participated at all in any of those conversations. So I think it's a really missed opportunity um, for Ukraine. Um, and I'd like to call out and see if anybody wants to pick up the mantle there and bring Ukraine back in. Um, but in addition um, to that, I just wanted to pick up a couple of points. Um, what Peter said is absolutely right. Um, you don't want to sell on being cheap. You want to sell on quality. And I think that's a really uh, key message that Ukraine has has got. There is the, the quality message there. So do do um, do stick with that. And then my other observation, just in case I don't get to say anything else, uh, this evening it is you've got to promote brand Ukraine so one of my concerns about Ukraine was competition between some of the regions and the promotion of Lviv IT cluster uh, versus what Kiev can do I think it's just really really important message that you come together as promoting Ukraine and what Ukraine's got to offer so I just wanted to get a couple of points over there Thank you very much, Gary. I'm, I'm sorry about this situation so is, with IT like, Ukraine. Uh, sorry, Andrew, interrupting you. Uh, um, I just wanted to say to... that, yeah, sorry about the situation with IT Ukraine Association. I personally know uh, people from there, and uh, uh, I will clarify what happened and uh, come back to you, Gary, because it's really strange situation. It's their work to represent Ukraine on such events. Yeah, please do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, so hope we will have a chance, one more chance to join a similar event. Okay, <laughs> any other comments here? Yes, uh, uh, related to Maria. <laughs> yes. Uh, I wanted to tell that uh, you know, we had all of these uh, political events in Ukraine that maybe negatively a bit uh, affected our reputation as a country. But even from all of these events, we got some experience. And now we are going to the country which have this challenging situation with Brexit. And we will bring with our business all of this background, how to deal with changes and challenges in your country. So uh, we are adapting this, uh, our companies to the situation, to terms on markets very fast because we had all of this background. And uh, the second thing that I think that is very important um, in case of our entering the UK market, um, we as the law, com law firm, we are dealing day by day with companies that are coming to us to become compliant with different European regulations, with UK regulations, if they are working with, the, uh, with this market. So from like my point of view, from this year, the last year, the last two years, the number of companies, who, Ukrainian companies, who want to become compliant with all of these regulations, it is increasing very, like, fastly increasing and it means that we are not just entering this market we're entering it with all of the compliance solutions that is, uh, would be really simple to adapt it to already uh, work in UK business to cooperate with compliant business it is much easier than other way so thank you. Okay, perfect, perfect. There, thank you very much for for that thought. So just to sort of sum up, uh, I would like each of you to uh, literally come up with a uh, with a sentence or two encouraging British uh, entrepreneurs and and companies uh, to look at Ukraine and at what companies in Ukraine uh, can uh, offer them, and also how they can help. You know offer better services for their clients. Who would like to start? May I start? Oh, Taras, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Well, I just wanted also to add on the previous question and to this one. Yes, I, I can agree we can't probably afford an expensive, you know, public awareness campaign on, on our advantages on IT. Probably that's true. And for the moment, we use, you know, the grapevine. When, when the happy client goes, sells, tells another client, and you mentioned the HSBC, you know, the, the majority of high street banks, they work with Ukrainian uh, developers. 
probably that, that's well well known facts and, and and most of them work and do uh you know that uh, uh se just uh, several months ago we visited uh, lord mayor of city of london and the first question he asked us is that i know that ukraine is strong on fintech can we can we enhance this cooperation because i know that your developers are, are very well and uh, uh so you know uh, a lot of uk companies are, are cooperating with ukrainians and do you know the world-class products for example they are very strong in science. Uh, the, the, in in this, this June, the UK company is going to launch, for example, a moon rover. And R&D center is in, key, is in, is in Ukraine. In Pro, and they use the Ukrainian engineers to do that. And so many examples of that. Uh, so I do hope that, well, we, we can do, every, we will do everything we can to, you know, to, to deliver these positive messages to, to UK business and to explain where we are strong. Uh, and just to just to end, probably I just want to to reiterate again that there are no more legal problems or or, or whatsoever. So we are on level playing field with other competitors, and now it depends on us how we we use and benefit from that. Thank you very much, Taras. I know that uh, Arthur uh, Arthur's mic is now working, and we, he hasn't had a chance to uh, say anything uh, so far. So I would like to briefly ask him, uh, you know, what he believes Ukraine can, uh, how he believes Ukraine can help uh, UK companies. Arthur, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. I yes. hope. Great. Uh, so uh, we have been working with UK market for four or five years, and we haven't had any problems with uh, with them. Usually, we we work in e-commerce where we help uh, UK uh, companies, UK uh, e-commerce brands grow from the local markets to the international ones, and. Uh, we don't have any problems. Uh, we just should start working with them. And while, uh, after we started uh, and building this uh, collaboration with class, then we continue work for ages. So no one, uh, we don't lose any client from the UK. We continue working with current clients and only bring new ones. No, because they already know what uh, Ukraine uh, take Tector can do. Maybe one thing: some of our clients don't like to share experience working with us, with other friends or other company. Maybe they want to keep the secrets secrets by their own. But uh, globally, everything good. We can work. Maybe uh, you mentioned it about one thing that uh, about price. And we try to tell our clients that we are not cheap, but affordable. It's very, it's very good case to show them <clears throat> that you can com compete with another uh, countries. Mm. I think that's all. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, we actually have a very similar question, uh, you know, in our chat related to uh, being competitive versus other non-EU countries, and I'm talking about Ukraine, being competitive against um, uh, other EU countries and non-EU countries. How would you uh, how would you see uh, that? We, we talked about the price that it's you know it it doesn't always matter or it's not the it's not always the the key point. Uh, what other aspects make uh, companies from Ukraine more competitive, competitive than um, you know other other players in the market? I think quality. We usually provide a good quality for uh, our clients, and uh, I know a lot of companies in Ukraine that provide a good quality. It's very our internal market is very competitive. You could uh, live here only if you provide good quality. That's why we can. Uh, No, we uh, we can uh, compare. Uh, so additional value with it between uh, our uh, country neighbors. But is that, and I'm I'm directing this question to to everyone on the panel. Uh, do you think that this quality is better than uh, you know? what other companies in other countries, non-EU and EU countries offer? Or is it, where, where is this, uh, you know, uh, competitive advantage of Ukrainian companies? Then, go ahead. 
on the price. It's about the value uh, you, uh, your uh, customer. You are creating the value. If if you create if you if that you, you can bring more value to the customer, then uh, he pays. Uh, for for this value, so this this is your competitive advantage. So in general, right, and um, its price is not not always not always matters, right. So for for instance, as a, as a technology vendor, we are we we have a software development in house, right, and but but we have to 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 pay competitive salaries because uh, otherwise our engineers will work for IT sourcing companies that are widely presented here on the stage. Uh, so, and in other cases, uh, the, the neighboring countries, uh, you have to pay the equivalent, otherwise you will lose brains and they will go to another markets for, for you know, bet, to be better pay off, or be, looking for a better future. But and in any case, so, uh, you, from the day A, you should be competitive. And what is a cool thing in, uh, with the software is that relatively Ukraine is a small market for IT vendors. So nobody is thinking about from the day A that there will be particular focus on only on Ukrainian markets. They're thinking about to go to the other markets globally, to United States, to U the EU, to the UK. So um, I think this is a, from from the starting point, it's but it's our our. Uh, I would say IT businesses here thinks about the quality and how they will compete and what the value they what are the value they can create their product um, and so on. So I think it's a complex issue, not about the price. So can we say that uh, Ukrainian companies basically give or provide more value for the same uh, amount of money? Is that uh, the competitive advantage? Yeah, I think in general the quality of IT products or services, um, you know, it was very high. It's, it creates more, it's, the value is very high, and the, and the, the price you pay is less. So I think it's a benefit. Very you know, so a delta, which is, that is uh, uh, that's uh, really a good thing for for another for Ukrainian businesses. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone would like to add to that, uh, Alexandra? I'd like to add, yeah. I agree with Stan, and uh, if you're talking about product companies, uh, we have uh, good examples uh, of companies like Grammarly, Magpo, Petcube, they are world-known product companies, and I'm sure Corify will be one of them soon as well. And if you're talking about service companies, uh, uh, we are not only IT uh, outsourcing or IT consulting companies. Uh, uh, we are providing more value to our clients uh, with helping them to connect to um, partners, to find investors, to find uh, clients for our customers and um, uh, to help them to solve their uh, problems, their tasks. Uh, for example, we provide uh, uh, business analysts who can dig deeper into the project of the client, not just uh, programmers who will uh, write uh, a code for this, this project. Now, so uh, these services are far more wider than it was like in 90s, for example, uh, because the industry is growing and uh, our expertise is growing. And uh, it's uh, important to know that um, IT services is uh, not just uh, IT outsourcing anymore. Mm -hmm. my, my question is also, you know, how that, you know, how this compares with other countries around Ukraine? Because, you know, if you are a, a UK company, you might also want to see what you can get from other places as well. So, you know, how does this uh, competitiveness uh, present itself compared to uh, other, other markets? And I, I saw Alex was raising his hand. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I have a few thoughts to add to this point. So, Alexandra named a few A class, you know top-notch top world companies and why I, I think it's important to uh, to learn why those companies trust their people which which are based in Ukraine and, and again I believe the answer is that because they are all well educated and intelligent people because they they have <clears throat> I'm sorry they have a good quality of education which uh, uh, probably one of 
you know the best uh, things that that we have uh, in, in that we received in legacy from the um, from the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. So what I want, what, what I would like to do now is just to give every single speaker, uh, you know, a, a you know thirty a thirty second slot to summarize and to pitch uh, their offer to uh, UK uh, companies, UK tech companies, and also uh, IT services buyers. So, uh, Alex, you were uh, you were just speaking, so I'll start with you. Yeah, sure. Uh, as as I mentioned before, Alticsoft is a data engineering and uh, analytics company. So uh, we build anything starting from you know data infrastructure, collecting data, and helping to manage the, this data in the right way. We also do business intelligence. We do predictive and prescriptive analytics. Uh, we enable, you know, intelligent automation of repetitive tasks, and we help our clients to cut operation costs. So we are also capable to build AI products on top of that, which solve, you know, really complex problems of personalization, decision support, you know, sentiment analysis. So basically, data is a new oil, and we, we help our customers to to work with 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 their data. Perfect. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, I'll ask Pete now. Pete, are you with us? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. I mean, as, as I said, Innovex is a is an established company. Uh, I'm actually based in the UK, so you, we we already have a footing here. So the reason to to, to use it like us, a we already have a very strong track record. Pe people have already mentioned quality. Uh, from Ukraine. That's what British people believe in, actually. They believe in quality and they believe that Ukraine has quality and bring that quality here. And I think the, the third thing is that we actually do deliver and we deliver on time. And that's 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 the big thing. We can give quality and we deliver on time. Price is never an issue. Um, it's, it's a matter of delivering a project, doing what we say we're going to do and doing it really professionally as well. And I think that's that's the key initiator for us as a company and also for Ukraine as a country as well is the fact that anything that comes out of Ukraine is considered to be incredibly professional and very, very high quality. And it really makes me proud to work for a company like Innovex and to be able to offer something like that. And so that's that's what we're looking to do and we're hoping to grow the business here really well too. Perfect. Thank you very much. Alexandra? Thank you. Uh, so I would say come to Ukraine uh, as soon as borders will be open. And um, we'll be happy to help your enterprise uh, to become digital. And uh, we'll be happy if you are a startup to help you uh, grow faster in more efficient way. Sigma is your reliable tech partner. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Alexandra. Arthur? Uh, what's your pitch? My, my, my main message is don't afraid working with Ukraine. Just try it. And after that you will realize that uh, quality is uh, really good and you can rely on uh, our companies. I totally agree with previous uh, speakers. And believe a lot of UK companies uh, use uh, Ukrainian teams and Ukrainian specialists. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, then, what's your pitch? Thank you. So, uh, as the uh, technology company that helps online businesses with the payment technologies to access to another market, so welcome uh, UK businesses to Ukraine, and they hope to see more businesses, uh, Ukrainian businesses in the UK. So, thank you. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, yeah, we, I represent engineers from Ukraine and we are quite innovative engineers in construction industry. So we create information models of the physical assets and help with the digital transformation of the buildings and, um, and, and industrial projects. So uh, very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you definitely want to uh, work with Maria. He, she can definitely walk you through uh, legal issues. Maria? Yes, 
Yes, sure. Uh, and uh, I'm also sure that any UK company that will start to work with any of the participants of our trade mission will get the added value from this cooperation. And also our company will provide legal services on, uh, first of all, data protection compliance, personal data protection compliance. And we help uh, companies to run their online activities compliantly with requirements of markets that they are targeting. And um, from the point that uh, all of of our team members, uh, we're from a product IT business and we have all of this background with working with uh, product IT business. We're always uh, finding a balance between the operational needs of business and legal requirements. So uh, I think that this uh, cooperation with our company will help you to reach all your main targets. Thank you. Taras, any final thoughts? You deal with uh, British entrepreneurs on a regular basis. Thanks, Andrew. Well, I would like to come back to, to the strategic partnership agreement. You know, I, I believe, I truly believe that this is like another convincing uh, argument, you know, to strengthen cooperation, not only in, in IT or tech, or it's in all other sectors and spheres as well. And the more we trade, the more we, we cooperate on, on user uh, sectors. Uh, well, it's, it's directly, you know, involved in impacts on, on, the, on the computer services as well. Uh, we do already see a huge uh, rise in growth in, in our exports. To, to our account, it's like 25% for the last five years. So uh, just remember that the agreement is like a two-way road. So, Ukraine is open for UK investments and, and exports as well. And uh, we are really happy to work with UK business. Fantastic. And the very final word for uh, Kerry, I, you know, I, you said that this would, this could be your uh, only, you know, comment earlier, but it's not. So I would like to, you know, hear from you at the very end. Okay. So, um, I can say the opportunity is huge. Um, I can say that the work that I've seen delivered by Ukrainian companies has been incredibly positive. As I say, you know, a number of Ukrainian companies have um, won uh, awards um, from from the work that they've done for UK companies. Um, we've got something called the GSA Partner Platform, and I know there are a number of Ukrainian companies that are ranked really highly in there. So I understand. Um, sorry, I can't remember who it was that made the comment that customers sometimes want to keep it secret. Um, we're trying to change that. We believe it's really important that, um, that the community has a voice. Um, so we've created um, with the, uh, an American partner uh, a platform where service providers around the world um, uh, can post their profiles and then get reviewed by the customers. So people know that these are, you know, these companies are doing some great work. We've got some fantastic Ukrainian companies um, performing incredibly well in the part of the platform. So, um, so all I can say is, um, you know. Keep up the good work, um, and um, I think that the opportunities are significant for Ukraine to do more and more business with the UK. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. And my final message to all British entrepreneurs who don't yet use services or do not work yet with uh, Ukrainian companies, if you haven't been to Ukraine, definitely visit when it's possible, of course. And I am quite sure that you will be convinced that you should work with Ukrainian companies as well. Thank you very much for, uh, for the whole chat. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, share it today and uh, see you in Ukraine. Andrew, let me, let me take a few seconds and to say thank you to Andrew, uh, who was moderating and uh, who is our media partner, Imagine Europe. Thank you so much. And uh, also, I'd like to say thank you to all the companies who joined the mission, Innovex, Avitar, Tebin, Altexsoft, Corify, Genova, Webart, and to our partners, Expert Promotion Office, the Embassy of Ukraine to the UK, 
and uh, you, you said competitive economy program of Ukraine. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you for this brilliant venue who provided uh, streaming today in the hub by Inevex. And uh, bye. <laughs> Hope to see you all later. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs>